Houston. Now an extremely dangerous Category 4 bordering on Category 5 hurricane that is now threatening Florida. Two and a half million people under evacuation orders as the storm approaches Category 5 strength, churning toward the west coast of Florida, probably make a landfall sometime in the middle of the afternoon and also south of Tampa Bay. But regardless of whether you're in the cone or not, we are going to be looking at a lot of hazards when it comes to this massive hurricane. So just because you might be out of the cone doesn't mean you're out of the woods. With all the hazards we've got going on here, watches and warnings, not only up and down the west side of Florida, but even up toward the southeast coast, where Ian could emerge over the Atlantic later on this week. This is America's Morning Headquarters. I'm meteorologist Kelly Cass, alongside meteorologist Jordan Steele in studio. We have a team of meteorologists and reporters stationed across Florida as conditions rapidly deteriorate, especially for the southwest Florida coastline, and that's exactly where we find meteorologist Jim Cantori. He's in Punta Gorda this morning. Jim, I'm wondering, what was your reaction, you know, when you saw that this thing had strengthened to 155 in just three hours' time? Yeah. Hey, Kelly, Kelly, could you ask me that question again? Somebody was talking to me. I apologize. Could you I'm ask just me wondering, you know, Jordan and I are here in studio and our jaws dropped when we saw the latest update becoming 155. What was your reaction as you looked at the update and saw that we have a now borderline Cat 5? Uh, you know, you want to know what my reaction was? I was like, okay, what storm haven't we had in history here, recent history, that has rapidly intensified up Florida 5? Okay, I, everything's doing it these days. It, it's kind of hip, I guess, for, for tropical season to get a Cat 5, and, and that's what's going on, uh, you know, with these warm waters. The stru Tell we always knew the structure was there. We always knew we had the fuel, right? So why not? It's, it's a perfect breathing machine, and if anything, the same trough that's going to kick it east actually accentuates the breathing. So it increases, the, you know, parts of the, uh, what we call the outflow channel, the lungs of the system. So that alone sometimes is responded to by having more air come in. Uh, you know, the eyewall replacement cycles, we know they look a little wonky on the air and certainly on satellite presentation, but we know that the, that's the way that the storm maintains its intensification. And certainly, again, uh, really since we literally came from the last five minutes to getting out here, it is starting to go downhill in a hurry. All right, let me set the stage. Uh, I'm in Punta Gorda. Behind me is Charlotte Harbor. All right, winds uh, blowing offshore here. So this is pushing the water out of the harbor at the moment. We also have this heavy rain going on uh, across the, you know, the, the basin of the Peace River, which is what flows into the harbor and dumps into the harbor here. Now, at some point during the day today, those winds are going to come around. And they're going to come around to the south. That means the wind's not going to be pushed out anymore. It's going to be pushed in. But you still have the rainwater that's trying to get out to the Gulf of Mexico. So that confluence, if you will, of what's going on with the rain, uh, and, and, and certainly you know, what we think is, is going to be the storm surge, that's not good. And that's where we could see this 12 to 16 feet. So from where I'm standing, just to give you an idea, uh, where we're talking about, that's probably the top of that pole. Right there. All right? Now, granted, the water's down now because it's being pushed out, but it's going to come back in. The other thing I wanted to mention is look at these pilings here where all the boats are at this marina. Uh, they're not very tall. So once you start getting the boats up over the top of that, they're going to start, you know, flowing just about wherever the wind's taking them. We know the winds are going to be uh, somewhere probably between 100 and 125 miles per hour based on the latest gust. If you, if you just look at where the center is, and we know they wobble. If it wobbles back to the right at the wrong time, we're going to be right in this thing. But if it wobbles back to the left, we may be as close as 25 miles from it, which is certainly within uh, that eye wall and some of those strongest winds. So, you know, our plan is to stay here as long as we can. Uh, when the winds and the water start coming up, we retreat. We've got a parking garage. That's how we're going to get out of the water, and who knows how much time we're going to be able to spend in there, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to get up in elevation uh, as everything here in, in, in Punta Gorda floods. The historic area floods a lot. All right, and, and, and even on a high, the gentleman was telling me last night that, you know, even on a king tide, uh, they get flooding in the historic area of, of Punta Gorda. So um, it's not going to be pretty. This is going to be a historic event, regardless if we get the Cat 5 or not. All right, regardless, uh, for Southwest Florida. The barrier islands are going to get hammered. If you remember during Charlie, we actually had a new cut on Captiva Island. As a matter of fact, on Sanibel and Captiva, there were new cuts that occurred because of the storm surge. Expect new cuts. 
All right. And probably a lot larger than what we had last time, just given the fact that we know that the wind field with this and, and the whole system itself is larger than Charlie was. All right, so this thing's coming in. It's moving slower than Charlie did, so it's going to dump prolific amounts of rain. It's also going to allow that water to just keep piling up and piling up and piling up. So be safe, everybody. We've already had the power flicker here, Jordan and Kelly, and it certainly looks like power eventually will go out as we get into this afternoon. Our worst time looks like somewhere between 11 and 5 o'clock tonight. That's when the worst that it's probably going to be hitting in through here. But either way, uh, a wobble to the left or right makes all the difference in the world. We'll see yeah. where we are in the wobble and where this thing's going to be. Jordan and uh, Kelly, back to you. No, good. Thanks, Jim, for the update. And actually, I can show people the wobble that you're talking about. If we bring up the graphics, you can actually see what the storm has been doing since it's been uh, passing over Cuba. You just look at the historical track here, and it basically shows that wobble that Jim was talking about as it's working its way up closer to where he is. And maybe the, the Fort Myers, the, the Tampa area, the Naples. Um, the newest update just came in this morning. And, you know, we've been bouncing the forward momentum by, you know, a mile per hour or two. It's now at 10. It was at 9. We're going to keep it at 155 miles per hour. So that is a very strong Category 4. But like Jim was saying, it doesn't matter. All right? If you just you just think this thing is a Category 5, it is so relentless in what it's going to be doing for the state of Florida. Um, the alerts have been up. The warnings are there. Hopefully everybody has battened down the hatches, has gotten the extra water. Remember, it's a gallon a day per person for at least seven days uh, because we could be looking at power outages for at least seven days in some of these areas. We've learned in recent history some areas that didn't get power back for weeks on time. So hopefully that's not the case here. We just know those power outages are going to drastically increase. The current track continues to take it into that north-northeast momentum. Um, and so, you know, that brings it right over the interior. We look at, you know, north side of Lake Okeechobee, you go into Orlando, you maybe work its way up and around the Jacksonville area. Remember, we have crews stationed up and down Florida to give you perspective. And then what does it do? Does it circle back in? We'll have to see. But for now, we've had some impressive updates in terms of the wind speeds that we've already encountered. And Key West was top of the chart so far, um, and that was at 97 miles per hour just outside of the airport. The airport did get, you know, roughly an 80 mile per hour wind speed. 79, um, but still, hurricane force for sure. Isla Mirada, upwards of 60, so tropical storm force winds will be felt pretty much statewide. The rainfall we've already had has been torrential. We had three and a half inches yesterday in Miami, which is a daily record, all right? We've got more expected for today from these outer bands that will reach the I-95 corridor. And those outer bands, Kelly, we know, have already prompted some tornado-worn storms. So the watch continues. That will stick with us till at least 5 o'clock. And yes, it goes into the interior spots like Orlando and around the, the I-95 corridor. Um, and so that big tentacle that pushed through this morning is what caused those tornado-worn storms early on. I don't think we have any confirmation. So there's a gap here down towards Alligator Alley, Kelly, until that next band works its way through.